So we're gonna take a quick look inside this Tetra indoor repeater made by Electrobit. This is a dumb uh, repeater with no like frequency translation. It does not regenerate anything. It has no real smarts. It just receives our app and pushes it out. And as you can clearly see, it has been opened before. But I thought it would be an interesting thing to look inside because these are not that common anywhere as junk. It's also hilariously overbuilt. The heatsink here, which makes fun noise, is completely machined. So it's a single billet. So it's... Considering that Electrobit is a bit of a defense contractor, uh, you can see that it they might do things a bit like that, but it's all machined. And we have the modem data, fans, power, sing, some signaling stuff. Might be a, actually a normal modem for like a phone line modem and modem power and a door switch. So we know when the cabinet is, has been opened. So let's open this up and see what's inside. And, and if I have a, saved the screws inside in a baggie or something instead of thing being lost forever. My plans for this are to use it as a RF front end because I can just put RF in and get it out from here. And if I recall, cor recall correctly, the power amplifiers inside are wideband and so they will work also on 70 centimeters, not just on the commercial, sorry, not commercial, but the, like the government 380, 390. Yeah, we have the screws. And so we see the thing and we see the logic here. We have RF in, sorry, RF out here, the RF in. It goes in, get some buffering, get, goes into the transmit chain. Let's actually take that off of the way. It goes into the transmit chain, into a power amplifier, and out. And that's all she wrote. Some solid state caps, some analog devices op amps, and a linear technology regulator so we see it's made by electrobit OU so electrobit is nowadays known as bitium but they, uh, when this was made they were still electrobit then they split the defense contractor radio frequency stuff into bitium they also make like secure android handsets and i think they made the designed and made the handsets for the Mexat Mexican government satellite and so on. They do all kinds of neat stuff. But the uh, Electrobit these days does some car automation stuff. Um, I think some German manufacturers bought it or something. But anyway, oh, these are on the radio frequency side of things. These are pretty boring. We could pull this out and take a look inside if there is some chips or something on the other side. Actually, let's do it for this one. This one is the one labeled downlink. Movie magic can hunt down the tool for these screws also. But yeah. Let's open this up. So my idea for this is that we have this software defined radio implementation of a Tetra DMO repeater. With the obvious aim to be being that we it's gonna do DMO, not in addition to DMO, it's gonna do TMO, so like proper trunking infrastructure side of things, which it does not currently do. Currently, it just has a sort of working DMO repeater, but it repeats, which is pretty awesome, which nobody else as a ham or as a free open source Tetra implementation so far has done. So that's noteworthy. And so I'm planning on using this as for the amplifier side of things for at least my first pass stuff on the 
longer time scale we're planning on getting a custom made SDR for it because Tetra is only 25 kilohertz what we don't need a Lime SDR like you are now currently using for it because we don't need 60 megahertz wide SDRs to do a 25 kilohertz one. You could do it with sound cards if there were no latency problems, which there are with so with those. Oh, so yay. So let's see what's the power ramp here. It's a PF 0341A made in Japan. Yeah. So there ain't that much stuff here. So more analog devices, chips, and not else. Let's remove that. Because I don't want to have a washer shorting anything out in the future. So let's put it back. So these are really straightforward as far as I can see. Just give them power and they amplify. There is some op amps for doing stuff, likely for stuff like monitoring temperature, and power consumption and so on. But it's it's what it is. But these are pretty neat. Actually I'm gonna save the putting stuff to back together after I've actually filmed this. The control board has its own place here. The main CPU is an H8 3048, so it's an H8 series from I think it's these days Renaissance, but back then it was Hitachi or something. It had a PLC CROM EEPROM here, but not anymore. And this is an X28C. It's C64, so 64. That's actually a really small EEPROM. I guess they use it for some running settings or something. Who knows? Let's pop this open and we have a Maxim Max 208. Well, it's just doing some level shifting and a Max 20002A. Yeah, Max 20. 2E, they're also just level shifting and level shifting and level shifting and these are all loose so I clearly have been inside here before, not that I remember anything about it, but if we take a quick look, this has this connection to operator one and it has an antenna on it, so I'm just thinking if there's some modem implementation somewhere, not that I think there is or the connection to modem was this separate connector here and it was like a GSM modem so that if this started oscillating or misbehaving because it is a dumb thing with which just directly amplifies anything so if you'd have a problem with it it could start oscillating and because there is a separate control system you can yell to it via the control system and, s and shut it down so that the oscillation stops and the handset starts working again. Which is one of the reasons why you can't just randomly put out GSM repeaters yourself or other cellular band repeaters because if they oscillate you likely won't notice but the telecom operator will notice plus they contribute to other problems because they usually have uplink noise. They can contribute by having stuff like uplink noise because this amplifier in this chain, which goes to like the uplink side, this is amplifying all the time, so it receives noise. This does not have a perfect noise figure. This doesn't have a perfect noise figure, neither does this one. So we maybe have the duplexer here and the losses from it. Losses from the coax, so we receive atmospheric noise. Have a noise here. This has a finite, this has some noise figure. It amplifies that noise. It gets amplified again here, and even more here. The chain is linear and all that, but it's still amplifying the noise. It goes to the 
output dubs, dub leaker and out to the, into the sky. And now we are transmitting this lump of noise, which is the combination of the receive channels bandpass here. The, how wide these are here. I don't think there was any filters there for this, so this is fully fight band, and then the bandwidth of this one. So it can be like a 5 megahertz or 2 megahertz wide lump of noise, but it's still noise. And now it's on the input side on the base station. So that's a real thing which happens with GSM repeaters. And actually, do I ha still have a GSM repeater somewhere in storage? I don't think so. It, it would have been a neat, neat thing to do a teardown of one of those because the legal ones are pretty neat because they usually have a GSM modem or some other modem inside of them so that they can be controlled off and turned off if something breaks. But I think that's where it is connected to the board. There we go. And there. Okay, that's boring. So we just have the Toshiba CPU, some Maxims, and a small EEPROM, and a 7.37 7 .7 something clock. When we look here, we just see that this is mostly just DC. Tons of tantalums. There's like not a single electrolytic on the whole board. Yep. All tantal tantalum and plastic and ceramic. I think there's two SMPS regulators here to get the powers to the amplifiers. We have some two MIC two nine. 502BT Okay, and what we have here MIC 4576 Berta uniform. Okay. Well, that's boring. Just easy. So, okay, well, this is what this is what these dumb tetra repeaters look like. I guess the external modem side of things the modem data and the modem door power here, they are just some external GSM modem or uh, some other thing. I guess you could use the existing antennas and put in like a transmit combiner or something and uh, use a UHF band radio modem for it. So, it's, so it would not depend on the cell phone network at all or any existing network, but who knows? I'm gonna put the screws back in, uh, pile this up and put it back into storage to wait for when I have actually something to feed RF into this. This was Austin Henry 2, Foxtrot Tango Golf.